gentlemen, welcome to GESF Live 2018. Please welcome your host, Mr. Rory Bremner. Daphne, ladies and gentlemen, give it a hand to the band, first of all. It's a lovely of a house band. Welcome to GES Left Live. I am Rory Bremner. I'm your host for today's show. Welcome, welcome to this, the most exciting event happening anywhere in a tent outside the Atlantis Palm Hotel in Dubai this afternoon. You're our guinea pigs. This is our very, very first show. And it's great to see so many people here. I, I don't think, I don't think there's ever been so many people in a tent like this before, I really don't. I, there's got to be, there's got to be 20,000 people in this room. Beautiful, beautiful people. So many wonderful people. People have come from all around the world, from Europe, United States, from South Africa, India, Japan, even from the other end of the Atlantis Palm in Dubai. How many stay at the hotel? Anyone staying at the hotel? Oh, it's fantastic, isn't it amazing? My, my, I tell you, my room is it's just a 10-minute taxi drive from the lift lobby. It's, uh, it's you, you've got to go there. You enjoying the conference? Yeah. yeah. This is something really, really special. I've been all around the world. This is a really amazing thing, bringing together teachers, educationalists, role models from all around the world. And of course, we've got the Global Teacher Prize that's coming up tomorrow. That's going to be awarded tomorrow evening, so don't miss that. Make sure you get to see as much of this festival as possible. There's a House of Commons themed debating chamber. There's a United Nations inspired international forum. There's a Future Zone. There's cafes. There's plenaries. There's so much to see. Get online at GEF 2018. Okay, and the password is education, right? There's Wi-Fi everywhere. I went to a funeral the other day. I go into the church, I said to the vicar, I said, can you tell me the Wi-Fi password? He said, I think that's a bit disrespectful. I said, is that all lowercase? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Meet the band, everyone. They're so good, they're beautiful people, wonderful people. I'm liking that look, are you Mexican? <laughs> tell me, turn around, look at that, look at that. Do you see the wall there? You might have to get used to that, let me tell you. It's gonna be great. It's a big wall, you know? I'm going to England soon, I'm gonna see Hadrian's wall. That was great, I knew him very well, Hadrian. Wonderful man, uh, great guy, wonderful wall. You don't get many Mexicans in Scotland, let me tell you. So, I love Dubai. Have you been to Dubai, wonderful place. Burj Khalifa, have you seen that? I call it the Trump Tower. The Burj Khalifa, let me tell you, a little bit about the Burj Khalifa, 160 floors, actually 161, but that's another story. <laughs> Thank you. I went to the souk, I got, a, I, got, I got a beautiful pashmina for Melania. That was a wonderful swap. I've, uh, <laughs> thank you. I'm here all week, try the veal. I've, I've been, I even went camel racing, camel racing, wonderful. I don't want to boast, let me tell you, I must have beaten that camel by 20 lengths. <laughs> Really, really got the hump. So, it's great being in this part of the world as well. Finding out little subtle differences between the Emirates. For example, you know, the people from Dubai don't like the Flintstones, but the people from Abu Dhabi do. <laughs> That's out tomorrow then. <sighs> okay. <laughs> no, it's great. We're hoping for a visit from our own uh, British Foreign Secretary, Boris Johnson. Are you familiar? Are you familiar with Boris Johnson? Let me, let me, let me, let me ask you this. This is our, our wonderful, our wonderful British, British Foreign Secretary, who uh, I, let me, let me, let me, I am, I am, I, I am the unlikely love child of Angela Merkel and Donald Trump, ladies and gentlemen. And I, it is extraordinary, wherever he goes in the world, he arrived in, uh, I think it was the Caribbean last year, there'd just been, of course, the, the storms, the hurricanes, people were battening down the hatches, and he arrived, let, let me, let me say to the, to the, to the, to the unfortunate victims of this, of this, of this catastrophe, who have lost their homes, and their, and their, and their livelihoods, and their, and their, and their, and their, and their, and their families, let me, let me say, let me say, I say to you, I say, I say, uh, I say, uh, I say, Hakuna Matata, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so we're ready to go. Let me tell you about this. This is the forum's very own chat show. First time we've done this, you are our first audience. What we're doing here, this is a safe zone. Our job is to entertain you. That's all it's about. We're going to entertain you. We're going to introduce some extraordinary and inspiring people. In the course of the next two days, we're going to meet some amazing people. We've got Olympic medalists. We've got Oscar-winning film stars. We've got former prime ministers. We've got a former vice president 
let me tell you, I thought he was going to succeed me in the White House. Any Bill Clinton fans in? He was so hoping Hillary was going to win. Let me say, I was looking forward to going back to the White House. A lot of great things happened there under me, let me tell you. <laughs> but hey, we're going to meet Al Gore later on tomorrow, I believe. But that's going to be great fun. So we've got all these amazing people, and they've all got one thing in common. They all share a passion uh, for spending a weekend in Dubai. <laughs> education, education, sorry for education. They've all got stories to tell, they've got experiences to share, they've got wisdom to pass on, and I'll be asking some of them their predictions for 2030, by which time Kim Jong-un will be into his second term in the White House, Dubai will be even bigger, uh, and the United Kingdom will still be negotiating Brexit. Okay, we've got a packed first show, we need to crack on. So what do an Olympic gold medalist, an inspiring teacher, and winner of the Global Teacher Prize, a world-class music producer, and three YouTube sensations have in common? Well, I guess we're about to find out because they're all on the sofa in our first show. Round of applause, thank you. Okay, so first off, someone who's used to coming first, gold medal in Athens, gold in Beijing, 12 medals in all. That's your record, by the way, let me tell you, that's your record. She is the joint success, most successful female swimmer of all time, the first woman to swim the 100 meter backstroke in one minute, which to be honest, is about the time it takes me to get into the pool in the first place. <laughs> Would you please welcome the wonderful, inspirational, Natalie Coughlin! Natalie, 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 a, a fantastic, the joint, most successful female swimmer of all time. Thank you, yes. It must be wonderful for a swimmer to finally arrive in Atlantis. <laughs> it is, it is. This is my first time at, at the Atlantis, uh, but I've been to Dubai before, actually for world championships, and we used to have a World Cup stop here. Wow, so this is familiar territory it is, for you. It is, it is. Absolutely. So when did you actually start swimming? Um, I started lessons at uh, 10 months old because oh, right. wow. I grew up at ten, uh, uh, in California. Yeah. And so my parents were just really responsible parents knowing that we had a pool in our backyard. So they yep. taught me how to swim and brought me to swim lessons. And then at age six, I joined a local swim team okay. and I had been doing it ever since. Was there a moment when you thought, actually, this is not just fun. This is what I want to do. This is, this is where I'm going. I was always a very confident yeah. <laughs> young person. Um, I, I like to say that I was competitive out of the womb. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, you know, in, when I was six, it was 1988, and that was the Olympics, yeah. um, where I watched Janet Evans and Matt Biondi win gold medals. And, and my friends and I all went around saying, I'm going to do that someday. No idea what that meant at the time. Um, and it took about seven years for the talent to start to, to show from wow. all that hard work and co competitiveness. But about 13 was when I got really serious. And you have to have really supportive parents to do that, don't you? Very, because Are they drive all around America, mornings. all of that? Yes. Early yes. mornings. Yes. It's a lot of hard work, isn't it? It's a lot of hard work for everyone involved. <laughs> what about the coaching? Because a lot of people, obviously, the concern is education. And mm -hmm. that's, what would you say the difference is between a teacher and a coach? Uh, they're the same. Honestly, um, the coaches, for good or, or, or bad, could leave such an impression on you, just like, just like any other teacher. Uh -huh. um, you know, you, you spend seven or eight hours a day in school and on, on academics, and then you spend another five hours, oftentimes, what I was doing in, in high school and college. It's hard to balance those, isn't it? It must be really it hard is. to kind of... But at the same time, um, having such uh, strong demands in the pool and in athletics kept me on track. In, in the school, um, in the classroom. And um, like I said, I was always a competitive person. Th yeah. And that didn't, that, that extended to the classroom as well. There's a really fascinating thing, debate going on in England at the moment about uh, coaching, because of course, to get an Olympic medal, to get even near the Olympics, uh, you're not going to do that in your comfort zone. You have to be pushed, you have to be challenged. Mm -hmm. And it's a question of how far you challenge, because, mm -hmm. you know, there's worrying now about, you know, does it cross over into bullying or whatever? How do you, what do you, how do you feel about that? Because you're yes. being really tested, aren't you? You are, you are. And actually, I majored in psychology at uh, University right. of California. And um, one of the things that I learned just from experience is the difference between intrinsic and extrinsic motivation. And if someone, if, if, if a parent or a coach is telling you your goals, that you're never going to be successful. You have to figure that out for yourself. And you have to be self-motivated. Um, so 
you know, it, it, a little bit of a nudge to get a little bit more out of you is great, but when it extends into bullying, it's, it's not healthy for anybody. Okay. Now, I don't know if you know, we've got something in common. I don't know if you know this. If I just, if I haunt you with a voice from the past, Napoli, you are swimming <laughs> like a torrent of pent up passion. Is that Bruno? Does that ring any bells, my darling? But you made a couple of mistakes, my darling. Your arms could have been. You did Dancing with the Stars. I did, I did. And I did that's strictly. fantastic, fantastic. Is it not impression. the scariest thing you have ever done in your life? You know, it was so funny because I thought it was going to be the scariest. And we practiced three or four weeks before the first competition. And I kept telling my partner, I'm going to get so nervous. I'm going to get so nervous. And then the first performance, I wasn't nervous at all. I was like, oh my gosh. The Olympic Games is the most stressful thing. I was going to say, you know, competing one, like one one minute of my of my the next the next minute will determine the next several years of my life and and represents the decades before of hard work. Um, so going through that and then doing Dancing with the Stars was just icing on the cake. It was. And uh, what we we were good with ballroom or the Latin because people to kind of divide. Some yes. are very good. I, 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 ballroom was my thing. Quick stop. Yes. I really enjoy that. But I've watched some of your Latin dance. My darling, your Latin dance. So you're very good. Thank you. You know, oh, that, that heat. But is, did you find that those were easier? Yes, I loved the bolero and the rumba. Um, I was very flexible. Um, and so my partner tried to throw in splits and back bends as much as possible. Um, so it was, it was so fun. I had such a great How'd time. How'd you get on doing. with Len Goodman? Len, well, I like a bit of the old Latin, but not too much. <laughs> he was great. He was great. The judges were really fun. Um, yeah, but it, being on reality television was just such a different thing. For me, as a swimmer, you never have to worry about being pretty or, yeah. or having, you know, a nice face when you're swimming. And oftentimes, well, I don't. Obviously. <laughs> well, oftentimes, I was known for making these like scowling faces before my races because I was getting into the zone. And so, to try and have a pretty face while I'm performing is was completely different. Uh, but it was a fun experience. But you've now carrying on the competitive thing into cookery. I mean, how do you mm -hmm. cook competitively? Competitively. Well, um, I've competed uh, like. For for charity on Chopped on the Food Network, and yep. I've been on Iron Chef as a judge and things like that. Um, currently, I am finishing up my cookbook, which will come out next uh, next spring, spring of 20. Nice plug. You should have brought it with you. We could have. I know. I don't have any mock-ups yet, um, but I, you know, cooking is such an expression of my, all my travels from, uh, tra you know, from every competition, uh, the food that my family cooked for me while I was growing up, it represents such memories and, and just sharing love with other people. And so that's one of the reasons I cook so much. So looking back at your success, I mean, are you, are you going to translate that into the future? What does that hold for you? Are you going to go into coaching? Are you going to go into commentating television? What's, what's next for you? I am doing so many different things. So uh, I just started a winery out in California. I'm in, I'm in the Bay Area, just outside Napa Valley. So um, this is actually our first year that we're releasing wow. uh, 2017 vintages. Um, and I'm also in a startup, a tech startup. Um, so we're doing real-time analytics for sport. Uh, we're starting with swimming. So uh, using your iPad or your iPhone um, to get real-time analytics. And, and so we're, it'll, it'll be so cool. It'll be uh, very exciting. Yeah. But whatever else happens in your life, you are an Olympic gold medal winner. You can't winner. take that away, which how is does amazing. That, how does that feel? I, I've met a few at Kelly Holmes back, back home, and Olympians, they have a different aura to them. You're, you're almost like a different breed. Um, <laughs> I take that as does, a compliment. It is, it's totally, <laughs> because, because you inspire people. And here we're talking about education. That's the important thing. Um, so what, do you have a, a, a message in terms of education, the next generation? What, how, how do you see the lessons that you learned in, in swimming translating to the classroom? Well, uh, to the classroom, it, it's really about setting a goal and figuring out your path to that goal. And uh, you know, something that could be so gargantuan as winning the Olympic gold medal can seem like out of reach. But when you break it down, like this is what I need to do uh, four years before the Olympics. This is what I need to do one year before the Olympics. When you figure out the pathway, it makes it a lot easier. And you could do that in the classroom as well. So it's being organized and, and keeping yeah. motivation because you, you went, you were three games. That's a long time. Yeah, yeah. It, time. I mean, the motivation part is really difficult. And, you know, in the water, it's, it could be the loneliest place. You know, is you're in your own head. You don't get 
get to talk to anybody. You don't really get to interact with anyone unless your coach is yelling at you uh, oh, <laughs> when exactly. you're on the wall. But um, but you did it all. That's yeah. some, 60, 60 medals. I, I, I only mentioned the Olympic ones, but 60 yeah. other ones. And 23 yeah. gold, I think 20, you, you I, remember I, them. I'm sure anyway, it's on my Wikipedia. <laughs> just an inspiring figure. Thank you very much. Well, that went swimmingly. Ladies and gentlemen, Natalie Coughlin. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, so we talked about the role of teachers and coaches. My next guest is a gold medal winning teacher. She was, in fact, the winner of the 2017 Global Teacher Prize right here in recognition of her pioneering work in a remote Inuit community in the Canadian Arctic. She and her students have taken on the challenges of this remote location with energy, imagination and compassion. And she was also named as one of the BBC's most inspirational and innovative women of 2017. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Maggie McDonnell. Maggie, good, good. Welcome. I was going to say Thank welcome you. back because oh, yes. does this place hold special memories for you? Uh, I definitely have some memories uh, from here. Um, Tell us about was, last year. Well, last year was phenomenal. Um, it was, it was groundbreaking for me. Even when I was recognized as top fifty, I thought, wow, career highlight. Like, how did you hear? Did they just get a letter in the post? <laughs> Actually, we'll find out. Actually, it's very unlikely getting a letter in the post where you teach. We'll come to it that. It takes about six weeks to get there. But yeah, yeah I did find out through email, which uh, we do have some internet uh, problems in, in the Arctic. We are in the digital divide, but eventually oh. I, I got the email. So come on, at and yeah. <laughs> Surely you can get to the Arctic now. Um, yeah. So, okay, so you heard you're in the top 50. Yeah, fantastic. Oh, my goodness. In fact, you know, I heard I was in the top 50. I was in Tanzania getting married. So I had Tanzania. Good internet right Hang on, there. whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, I jump around a lot. <laughs> One minute in the Arctic. Yeah. Then you're in sub Saharan yeah. Africa. What have you Christmas got? Christmas break, I went to Tanzania. What have you got against temperate climates? <laughs> I don't know, man. It's just so just exotic like, to be in these foreign places. You just like extreme yeah. heat, extreme cold. <laughs> okay, so you're in Tanzania when you're here? Yeah, I was amazed. It was just after New Year's. I'm like, this is. One of the best moments of my life. Just got married, just been named top 50. I can't believe it. Who nominated you? Know? you? How did it? Um, it was, in fact, so touching. It was my students yeah. uh, who were part of the nomination process. And one of the best moments was that I actually got to bring those students here with me to Dubai Whoa, last great. year. And one of them got to come up on stage with me. Uh, when I won and, and hoist that trophy together, so oh. um, that was so And these, so, these are the so Inuit powerful. students. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So yeah. It's like the lottery, you have to be Inuit to win it. <laughs> Band? Thank you. Wake up over there. Anyway, so, uh, and tell us about this. It's a remarkable place where you teach and remarkable children. Tell, tell us about where you teach. Yeah. I believe you can only, you have to fly in there, don't exactly. you? You can only weigh in is by plane. Yeah. It's like um, Monaco, but slightly colder. <laughs> So, okay, that's enough. Your gateway. Ban every now and again if it's too often you're fired. You know that. Yes, you need to bear it in mind, especially the Mexican one there. Okay, Maggie. I'm so sorry, we were back in the Arctic. Yes, back to the Arctic. So you would leave from Montreal and you need to have about $4,000 in your pocket because that's what it's gonna cost for a plane ticket to get to the village that I work in. You're gonna fly all day on what we call a milk run and you're gonna stop at each coastal village. There's 14 villages that dot the, the coastline in the Arctic region where I work. You're gonna drop off mail, pick up new, <laughs> new passengers, etc. Stop, go, stop, go, and eventually by about 8 p.m. at night, Hopefully, if there's no blizzard, et cetera, mechanical delays, you'll arrive in an amazing village called Salowit, nestled in between these gorgeous, gorgeous mountains covered with That's snow. That's extraordinary. Yeah. What, what took you there? Were you, you, you weren't born there. What took you there? Well, as I mentioned, I have a huge connection to Tanzania. When I finished my first degree, I spent a lot of time doing international development work. But as a Canadian, I knew, you know, we have a lot of development work we need to do within our own borders. Mm -hmm. We have such a contested uh, and a hard history with our indigenous people. And uh, we're at a stage now in our country where we're talking about reconciliation and healing. And uh, I wanted to go and experience working with indigenous people and just have that lived experience to help inform me as a Canadian because I just felt the responsibility as a citizen to, to know more about our history and our people. It's a remarkable, I think your plane is just leaving actually. <laughs> 
That's got to go 14 stops to get back to, to the Arctic. Yeah. But this is also uh, you winning last year's Global Teacher Prize. Um, it's also had an effect on your students as well, I'd imagine. Oh my goodness. I've been invited since this prize uh, to so many places like Chile, Argentina, China, France, et cetera, et cetera. And every time when they invite me, I challenge them. I say, don't just invite me, invite my students. That's and let's brilliant. have indigenous content on, on this trip. And so my students now have met President Bachelet in Chile. They've met former President Bill Clinton when they were at the United Nations in How New they York. How they got on with Bill Clinton? Um, I've, I've, <laughs> I've got to say, I've never met an Inuit before. Do we get to rub noses? Is that what we do? So, sorry, that's probably very offensive. Um, <laughs> I apologize to the Inuits uh, watching this uh, on a very crackly internet line. Um, so tell me, um, it, were you inspired by teachers as a young person? And what got you into teaching? I just loved school. It was always just such a safe place for me to come every day. And, and it was all that work that my teachers did, not just inside the classroom, but outside the classroom. That made my life so rich, even though I grew up in a rural area yeah. that was pretty remote. Um, and my teachers also enabled me to like work with young people. I remember my, my first gym teacher actually created programs where I was just 14, but I started coaching at that age. Wow. You know? So he was teaching me and then teaching me how to be a teacher as well. So, and it's, but it's not just the classroom, is it? I mean, it's the outside, you're teaching them life skills, because also you have to deal with, with mental health increasingly. Absolutely. And, I mean, your, your students are how old? Um, they really range from uh, 11 years to 18 years. Because the changes in their brain, we're finding out much more in terms of mental health, the changes, your brain is moving from being essentially guided by you know, the amygdala and your emotions and your needs mm -hmm. to reason and rationality. People used to say, oh, teenagers, it's just, you know, it's just hormones, but there's so much yeah. more going on and you're having to deal with all that and teach them life skills as well. Yeah. And layered on that, with working with Indigenous people, they often have a lot of intergenerational trauma yeah. that the kids are bringing into the classroom with them. So it's a really huge, uh, huge undertaking for a teacher to take on and help, help manage that space and those emotions. So what advice would you pass on to teachers here? Wow, I think you're in an amazing profession and I encourage you to just be resilient and keep at it. And that one thing I always say, uh, it's multiple bottom lines. Don't just think about your paycheck, though. I say that <laughs> having won a million dollars, but whoa, a million dollars! So many, well, there's so many. You're paying for the drinks after lines. this. You know the relationships yeah. I have with my students are. You can't put a price tag on it. That's that's know? that's the best thing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and you get to be a lifelong learner yourself as a teacher. You're always acquiring new skills. You're always meeting new people, and it's just one of the best professions. And I think you the best thing. For. Best thing is it was you, it was your students that nominated you. Yeah. So it was just they love fantastic. you. Fantastic. So you. do we. <laughs> Ladies and thank you, Maggie McDonnell. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, it's time to meet our next guest. Many teenagers spend a great deal of time watching YouTube videos, if they're anything like my children, but our next guest spent their teenage years creating and starring in their own videos. They have three million subscribers to their YouTube channel. They won a Streamy Award in 2016 for Best Live. Uh, it doesn't say Best Live what. Uh, they were nominated for a Teen Choice Award in 2017 as Choice Female Web Stars. Will you please welcome Veronica and Vanessa Morell, the Merrill Twins! So, the Merrill twins. So, tell me, how did you first meet? In the womb. Yes! Thank you very <laughs> much indeed. Boys. I knew you were going to say that. Um, who was first? I was born first and she okay. was second. 45 no, minutes apart. 45 minutes? Yes. Whoa, well done, Mrs. Merrill. <laughs> was it Merrill or Merrill? Merrill. Merrill. Okay, that's wonderful. This is really scary, you know. It's just, <laughs> I think I'm, I am seeing double. Do you, do you do a thing where one sits on the left, one sits on the right? Do you do that thing so you can tell them apart? Yes, well, we do. Okay, yeah, always. Always. You know. I'm so, always on the right side in our videos, and she's always on the left. Well, your guys is left and right. Okay, but you sort of instinctively <laughs> know where to stand. Yeah. Tell me, is it might seem a strange question, but is it is it cool being a twin, or is it a pain, or is it a bit of both? Because you know, you're always a half of another being in a sense. Tell me, tell me the good things and the bad things. Well, I mean, to number one. <laughs> um, we we. 
that's all we know is just yes. being twins. And we've always grown up being best friends. Um, we've always had someone with us. So we didn't really feel the need to have other friends because we always had each other. Yep. But we do have other friends, so we're not like loners. But um, I suppose one of the yeah. things was, was, you know, can you have separate lives? I mean, do you go out um, separately or is there always like something missing? Or, and, and, and are your characters different? Um, the older we get, the more we see how we're like kind of growing as individuals, but we still like love hanging with each other and um, our characters. So we have characters on our channel and stuff and they're all yes. very, very different. Yeah. They're not alike at all. And so... Um, you love creating characters, that's the thing yes, about it. So tell me, I describe you as YouTube stars. How would you describe what you do? Um, we are content creators and we create... Content creators! <laughs> I'm yes. going to fine you for saying that. <laughs> um, and we, uh, we are the creators of our own show on YouTube, basically. Yeah, okay. we put out an episode every single Tuesday. We uh, direct it, write it, produce it, edit with our dad's help as long okay. as... Okay, he holds the camera? Us. Yes, yes. <laughs> and he edits. He, and he edits? Stuff. Yeah. But we is he do here? Too. He, he is. is, but backstage. Oh, okay. Or maybe somewhere over there. Oh, I don't right know. There. Okay, oh, he's right there. <laughs> okay, he'll edit that bit out, don't worry. <laughs> That's good. So tell me, and how, when did it start? Because you're only about nine, aren't you? I mean, you're amazingly, <laughs> no, what I'm saying is you're amazingly young to have three million on YouTube. I mean, you are global stars, and here you are. I was kidding, you're, how old are you now? We're 21. 21, I was joking. Um, but I mean, to be that young and, to ha and it started, what, even younger? Even younger. Well, we've always had a passion for pursuing um, just entertainment in general. We loved entertaining people. And, you know, speaking of teachers and stuff, and my teacher in third grade actually inspired us to ah. pursue what we wanted to do. Because I'll tell the story really quickly. No, no, tell it slowly. Oh, we've okay. got time. It's All okay. Right, so the story is. We've got till Monday. <laughs> Um, the story is there was a talent show at our school, right? Mm -hmm. And we wanted to perform together and sing. And um, we were actually in separate classes. Uh, but so during the talent show, my teacher got to see us, or my teacher did not get to see us perform, but her teacher did. And all the other teachers were like, oh, the twins sang really cute. Like, I wish you could have seen it to my teacher, Miss Howard. And Miss Howard says to my sister and I, um, can you uh, just perform it? again for me in the class with in front of the students just once again and we're like okay sure so she took uh, her out of her class and we just sang it oh. together and Miss Howard was like this is amazing I have to show the other teachers she ended up taking us around the entire school performing for the sixth grade teachers the fifth grade teachers the principal like very like private like concerts type things and it gave us so much courage yes to just Sing, and we weren't afraid. We were so timid at first, but once we she took us around, we were like, "This is something we love doing." But this reminds me of, of what Maggie was doing with us. I mean, they recognised something in you, mm -hmm. yeah. And they said, "Do you know what? We're going to go with this. We're going to run this. We're going to take it around and really uh, encourage you." And that's yeah. a wonderful thing to do. That's good. so it started. So I was wondering if the actual the success that you've had was was by accident or if there was a plan behind it. But it started out just just as fun, didn't it? It's it a passion. Yeah. And it's it always been is. a passion. Yeah, we've always been making videos since we were young, and um, it just kind of grew into something a lot bigger, and we didn't expect this to happen. At what stage did you realize? Was it like sort of creeping followers? Your followers are creeping up on Twitter or something. You said, oh my God, we've got 100,000 views. Oh my God, we've got 200. So how, how did that process take place? You began to realize that there were people out there who loved what you did. How did you find out about that? Well, we, we, you know, there's never really a stage where a YouTuber says like, whoa, people love me and like, I'm going to keep making videos. It's because... But you suddenly realize yeah, that, 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 that you were, you, I mean, you, you'd say you were doing it for yourselves, for the fun of it. Yeah. And suddenly, this amazing thing that out there, people are going, we want more of this. We enjoy this. We like this. And you go, whoa, hello. Yeah, I think that moment was when we just saw the numbers started growing and we were getting a lot of opportunities that we never thought we would. And that's yeah. when we were like, wow, this is more than just a fun passion. It's our job, it's our income, it's how we survive. You and know? then, yeah, and then we, we realized too, with the amount of followers we were getting that we are role models for young people and that we have a responsibility. I was gonna ask yeah. you that, because you've got three million. Does that give you a big responsibility? How do you, how do you feel about that? Because there's a lot of young people, we were talking with Maggie earlier on about you know, how important it is, the, the role models they have, the influences they have, and the encouragement that they get. So, so how do you think a lot about that? 
Oh, oh yeah. definitely. Um, we're always promoting to just positivity on our channel and to never give up. We actually just did a series on our channel called Project Upgrade where we um, inspire young girls to pursue STEM. Uh, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. I'm glad you spelled that out. I always, <laughs> I always struggle with that. In case know. people don't know what that is. It's okay. But, um, so our just, you know, it's a passion making videos, but it's also a passion to inspire yes. people to pursue things they want to do and never give up. Do you have a big mailbag of people writing to you all the time and asking for advice? We used to until the post office complained. <laughs> Way, brilliant. Oh, you should move to <laughs> northern Canada to Inuit territory there. Tell me, um, have you ever done any videos about swimming? We haven't. No. Because you have an Olympic gold no, medal swimmer here. <laughs> you, know, you grab people onto your channel. Because uh, uh, once I've seen it's always you two. Do you have guests on as well? I haven't, oh, yeah. We do. Yeah? You, you call it a collab. Collab. Yes. <laughs> I like the sound of that. A, col a collab. That's great. So, uh, well, you, you have to get Natalie on. That's great. Yeah, were you yeah. sporty as well as young, or was it just full time media stuff? Were you ever were you sporty kids? Um, we did cheerleading track and, and track. Cheerleading. <laughs> Whoa. Oh. I know. God, well, actually, actually this is a very, I can see the path into the, in, from cheerleading into entertaining videos because you're just such a great double act. You really. Really, really good. So Maggie, did, did you teach many twins where you are? Um, we do have a few sets of twins in the village and uh -huh. uh, yeah, they're, they're exciting to teach and they play lots of tricks on us. <laughs> are there any sort of future web stars in your school? Um, we do, we have an amazing uh, rapper in our school oh, called wow. Larry T. So maybe we got to get him on your, uh, on your shows as well. He's yeah. famous in the Arctic, but he hasn't yet broken through on Southern Canada yet. But, That's uh, a great thing, yeah. I'm famous in the Arctic. <laughs> You know, you talk to any polar bears, they all they know, know who him. I am. They know him up there. Well, you know, he can say he is officially the coolest rapper. Definitely. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> the band have woken up, ladies and gentlemen. Hey. So it's great because you say to your rapper there, say, how are you doing? He'll just say, I'm just chilling. Um, <laughs> so it's great. So, hey, Natalie's thinking, oh, thank God I don't live there. I would not swim every day. Or you probably would. You'd say, What's the coldest water you've ever swum in? Oh my gosh, um, I did the Trans Tahoe Relay uh, two years ago, so I was in Lake Tahoe, um, and so it was 50, I think it was 56 Fahrenheit, uh, at 100% I got hypothermic, I started drinking the lake water and like just wanting to go to sleep, which is the oh, stage where you need to get out of the water. <laughs> we've all done that. Um, but it was right after Olympic trials and so I was really fit and super lean and I should not have been in that water without a wetsuit on. I'm such a baby with cold water, I couldn't oh, handle my Northern goodness Canada. Me. Oh, well, that's, <laughs> well, that's yes, it's good, good to realize where you should be and where you shouldn't be. I think yeah. you were born to be on the internet, weren't you? This is the thing. Do you feel, in a way, when you wake up, do you feel that's where you actually are most alive? Because I've worked with people in the past, like David Frost, and you, I, I realized after a while of knowing him that he was only really alive when he was on television because that's what he loved, that's what he loved, that was where he felt happy. I think for us, we've always had this passion to just entertain and just make people happy and smile. Just even when we were younger, we would always make our parents watch our plays with our dolls that we would write. And so just having this opportunity, uh, like YouTube as a platform to be yep. able to like make people happy, make people laugh is really cool. And you know, I think it's the best place. Um, well, you've done it here too. Yeah. Ladies and oh. gentlemen, thank you very much thank to you. the Merrill Twins. Thank you. thank you. Stay where you are. Don't go away. OK, so we're going to welcome our final guest, staying with YouTube. It's where our next guest adopts the persona of Physics Girl. Do you like physics, guys? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, good. This is going to go well. OK, she posts engaging, entertaining videos explaining the fundamentals of physics. She also hosts a PBS Studios digital channel. She studied physics at MIT, graduating in 2011. She then went on to work for the University of California. Uh, so she's quite bright, this one. She's pretty smart. As an outreach coordinator at the Center for Astrophysics and Space Sciences, sciences. She regularly discusses science on national and international media, including US News and World Report. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the physics girl herself, Diana Cowan. <laughs> All hugs. All hugs, absolutely. And you're the only one who can calculate the mean distance between everybody on the sofa. I absolutely you probably, could. You, you I would need maybe a measuring device, and I'd need to know what units you wanted in, uh, and so forth. But yeah, sure. 
But physics, I mean, that is traditionally, I don't know, it, it's, it's had a bad rap over the years, hasn't it, in terms of maths and physics, but people think, they think it's, it's sort of quite geeky, it's quite complicated, it's difficult. You are just driving a train through all that. Oh, great. <laughs> the conductor. Um, I, yeah, I think that you're right. Uh, I think math and physics um, has gotten a bad rap. People uh, tend to say that they hated physics and they think that's an okay, cool thing to say. Yeah. But like, you would never say, I hate reading. I'm like so bad at reading. Like, My children do. <laughs> How old are they? <laughs> uh, old enough to know better. Okay. Yes, I keep trying, yeah. <laughs> Seriously. And I hope they're watching this. They're probably in bed. No, they're probably they on YouTube watch, now. They gotta, they're going to watch the Merrill Twins now. They've got to watch they, these girls, yeah. No, no, I'm going to block them and they're going to be on Physics Channel now from now on. <laughs> so how did it start? Tell me, how did it start? Were you a teacher first and foremost and then? Oh, oh no, 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 no. Um, I'm not a teacher. In fact, you know, being in this room with so many teachers is intimidating because I don't, I don't consider myself an educator. I consider myself like the sparker of curiosity. So you do it on the internet. You're, you're, like, you're like a teacher, but without the CRB checks, all that the, stuff. Sorry, the what? Oh no, they're, sorry, they're all the, oh, sorry. That's complicated, yes. <laughs> now all I can, the background. I can deal with complicated. No, no, it's when you're working with young children and you have to have your thing, but you're, you're online, so you actually, yeah. you know, you can do it. So, um, Tell me, okay, yeah, so you were saying how it started. I interrupted. Yeah, uh, so I did my degree in physics at MIT, and um, I was working doing research in astrophysics, and then I switched over and was working on iPad apps at General Electric, sort of trying to find my place in the STEM career. Um, and I, I just decided that I loved science communication and outreach, um, and I started a YouTube channel as a side project. I thought maybe one day I'd work on documentaries or write as a science journalist. But then YouTube just picked up. And I was like, Mom, I'm quitting my engineering job to become a YouTuber. And she was like, you're doing what on the internet? <laughs> she was not happy. <laughs> and was that a combination of the fact that you were really enjoying it and you were finding, you were finding your home like, like the twins did? You were finding your home there? Or was there a demand for it? You suddenly realized people saying, we want more of this. Or the two of those together? I think it's always a combination. Um, every YouTuber will tell you that they just started because they were passionate about whatever they wanted to make their yeah. channel about. Um, I obviously was passionate about physics because I did an entire degree in it. Um, and I, have, I had a ton of other interests. So this was a way to sort of talk about physics and then bring in these other interests. I mean, I make videos about music and some about, I, I turned a shake weight into a generator. You're going to have to tell me what a shake weight is. Oh! <laughs> Come on. Uh, maybe that's an American thing. Oh, no. I can't show you. I, I don't know. You don't know? I don't know. What's a shake weight? Is it something to do with twerking? It's a weight. <laughs> it's a weight that has springs on it, and it uses inertia. Um, okay, break this down. What are springs? Sp what are springs? <laughs> I'm joking. Right, so what it's a weight that I has spring on it. Okay, well, an entertaining show, I hope. <laughs> um, so, okay, so it's, a, it's a, a weight on a spring. It's, it's got weights with springs, and so as you shake it back and forth, okay. an emotion I'm not going to do. Um, oh, yes, you are. <laughs> you're live. You're going around the world. This is being watched in the White House. Donald Trump saying, I want to see this as a change from Sky and Fox. <laughs> I'm going to be shown the, the difference between a shake weight and a generator, and I want to know this. Uh, so, okay, so it's experiments, and it's things like this. Yes, yes. But is this a sign? Do you feel that physics is not being taught? It's a generalization, but do you think that, that there's something about the way that physics is taught in schools that is not addressing it correctly, and this is why there's such an appetite for your stuff? You know, it so depends on the teacher. It does. Um, I was inspired by my teacher in high school. Uh, Kathy Jones was one of the reasons why I went and studied physics, because she was an incredible and enthusiastic teacher. Some teachers um, end up teaching physics, and they, that's not their specialty. That's not what they're passionate about. Um, they, it's just out of necessity. So. Uh, it, it just so depends on who's teaching it and whether the enthusiasm comes through. I was picking up there that the, the, the passion is the yeah. most, I mean, this goes right across the board, is it? Well, how were you taught physics well at school? Was it good? Was it taught well? Was it taught badly? How, how were your teachers, any of you? I had an amazing uh, female physics teacher and uh, she just loved it and she was a specialist in it and it was great to have her there because sometimes rural or remote communities have a hard time recruiting you know, specialized teachers so it was fantastic. What made the difference? What was, what was special about her? I think what makes a difference in any classroom is the relationship. Mm. When, that, when that teacher can connect to that student and it's phenomenal when you guys are able to do that online. Okay. I think that's very special. So we've got passion, connection, Shake weight, obviously. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Um, key ingredient. Very. Yes. Um, here's one for you. Are scientists born or made? Uh, oh, made, for yeah. sure. Absolutely. Yeah, so much. Uh, uh, man, well, I'm just, I'm thinking of Stephen Hawking, who... Well, I was just, that was my next question. Yeah. You anticipated that. Um, there was a little loop in space-time <laughs> there that you got onto my next question. Because, yeah. of course, you know, we lost him this week. Exactly. Um, and there was yeah. a, a remarkable, I mean, extraordinary man. Um, yeah, yeah, an incredibly inspirational scientist as well. Um, I, I think there, it, it's rare to, to find a scientist who not only is contributing um, to their field, uh, you know, which is hard to do nowadays. It's really hard to make really groundbreaking con contributions to science because we've come so far already. Yes. Um, so, so he was one of those scientists, but also inspired an entire generation of scientists. I was inspired by him. Um, I remember seeing him on TV as a kid, and he he was the person that taught me. You know, as I stared up at the stars uh, every night because I grew up in Hawaii, we had good stars in Hawaii. Very good stars. Uh, great stars. Um, but Barack but he, Obama was from Hawaii, wasn't he? He was. Yeah. I looked up at the stars, <laughs> and I thought I could be one of them. All oh, the yeah. presidents. <laughs> no, you get all the presidents on this show, let me tell you. That's great. So, what, I'm going to ask, what was it specifically about him that inspired you, do you think? It was, it was you know, he took sort of the, the everyday and he turned it into something that you can ask questions about and answer those questions. Find deep answers to questions about anything in the universe. And you feel that you're sort of passing that flame on in your own way? I'm doing my best. Doing your best. Uh, it's, it's hard. It's tricky. I mean, I just, I want to share science. I want to share my enthusiasm and my passion for it. Talk about the things that intrigued me throughout my education um, and hope that it's going to inspire. It's going to maybe change the way people view science. Coming back to that question of whether science is cool. I, I'm hoping to, to help change the view, make people think that it is. And how do people find you? Oh, on the internet, mm -hmm. uh, f physics girl, just Google it, I suppose. Google physics girl. And how much is on there now? How long have you been doing this? Ooh, I've been uh, full time for almost three years. Wow. Yeah. So my daughter, she has her exams, in fact, yes, coming up in a couple of months time. Mm -hmm. So she's going to spend a lot of time on physics girl. <laughs> well, I it might not help her. Well, <laughs> I'm talking about dark matter and about shake weights. So, but hopefully she'll get inspired to study. She will definitely find out about shake weights, unless she falls down one of those internet holes and actually keeps going, oh no, I actually prefer the Merrill twins. <laughs> oh, oh no, oh no, I'm going to Google about Natalie and her swimming. Oh no, but... Um, not a bad place But she gets so distracted on. at the school that she's at. I think yeah. I'm, I think I'm going to need to send her up to Northern yeah. Canada where there's no <laughs> distractions. And uh, that's great. Well, that would be absolutely wonderful. So tell me, uh, just, just to sort of wrap things up, um, the message that you would pass on to this, this, this conference in terms of the people who are, their passion is education, what would you, what would mm. you say to them? Yeah, um, gosh, I would say, you know, keep your curiosity. Um, that's sort of what drives me and drives my videos. Any of the topics is something that I'm curious about. I know that as teachers, sometimes it, it gets hard um, with all the logistics and all the kids you're dealing with uh, to keep that passion, but but remember why you loved the subject in the first place, and that was probably curiosity. Um, the shared theme, of course, between you as well is social media. What advice would you give to somebody who is wanting to launch their YouTube channel? I mean, I know you don't want rivals. People say, you know, <laughs> if, if people come to me for advice, they say, you know, my son wants to be an impressionist, uh, you know, he wants to imitate people. And I, I always say, tell him to read the Bible. They say, why? I say, but, well, it won't stop him, but it'll slow him down for a couple of years. <laughs> but how would people get into social media? How would, what, what advice would you give them? The, the twins, what would you say? Um, I would say that uh, find something you're passionate about and be consistent. Uh, share it with all your friends and collab with people. A lot of collab. Yes, collab. Collab. we've got three. Okay, passion, <laughs> connection, collab. You've been wonderful guests. Thank you very much indeed for being our guinea pigs on our very, very first show. Thank you very much indeed, <laughs> Natalie Coughlin, Maggie McDonnell, the Merrill Twins, and Physics Girl. Thank, thank you very you. much indeed. Okay, thanks to our ambassador band and to all of you, our audience here and on YouTube. I'm Rory Bremner. This has been GESF Live. Play a shout, boys.